This view of an airport at night reminds us how our modern world is dependent upon aluminum alloys for airplanes' fuselages, wings, and wheels. Mountain bikes take advantage of the high strength and the low density of aluminum alloys. A helicopter would have a hard time getting off the ground if it weren't for aluminum in its fuselage. Even the trucks on a skateboard are aluminum. Here's a stem to hold on to bicycle handlebars. And as you can see, it's very shiny, bright. Aluminum is very attractive metal. But once sometimes it corrodes, and that's what we're going to discuss today, is why would aluminum decide to corrode? This is a part from an aircraft. As you can see, is that these are the bolt holes, the rivet holes, which hold the parts together. If we flip it over, we'll notice that some of these on the outside surface are showing very high amount of uh, crevice corrosion, some filiform corrosion going into the paint. These two holes are fine, but these two are showing corrosion. This aluminum sheet here shows examples of filiform corrosion. It's also known as worm track corrosion. You can see the small little filaments going across the surface. This sheet here shows exfoliation corrosion. This was in ground contact. The ground is very salty. You can see how the uh, Corrosion went up between the grains, those are very flat grains, and caused a kind of exfoliation or leafing out. And this spoke right here in the very middle uh, pulled out due to fatigue. So we had an example of uh, galvanic corrosion with, this, with the um, rim, and, the, and then also corrosion fatigue causes failure. This aluminum plate was used as a heat sink for electronic equipment. Cooling water flowed through it. As we can see, the cut outside on this side here is that everywhere the water hit turbulence, it became very turbulent, especially these elbows, we had a whole lot of metal loss. This is called erosion corrosion. Here's an example of cavitation corrosion of an um, impeller, aluminum impeller, inside an automotive cooling system. This aluminum measuring cup from my kitchen shows examples of pitting corrosion. Look at it up close, we can see there's some pits have perforated completely through the aluminum. The reason that aluminum corrodes is because when aluminum reacts with water, there's a huge amount of energy is released. The delta G for this reaction is 1.1 megajoules per mole. And this is a huge amount of energy for a chemical reaction. So the question comes not why does aluminum corrode, but why does aluminum not corrode? The reason aluminum does not corrode is between the water and the aluminum forms a very thin passive film of aluminum oxide. This is only about 3 nanometers thick. Now this thin film can break down under certain conditions, and the certain conditions are if there's also oxygen and also salt in the water, and there's defects in the film. Now if those conditions are met, the aluminum can dissolve away as aluminum plus 3. The aluminum loses those three electrons, the three electrons go off someplace else, and they find another defect so they can pass through the film, and they combine with the water and the oxygen, and they form hydroxyls. The aluminum, meanwhile, reacts with water, and it forms aluminum oxide, and it also forms H pluses. These H pluses collect in an area, occluded cell, and they attract the chlorides, the sodium chloride, and we form a dilute hydrochloric acid which continues dissolving away the aluminum metal. Now, the aluminum which is released uh, reacts with the water outside the pit and it forms a chimney of aluminum hydroxide. The pit becomes so acidic that we can start having hydrogen reduction or hydrogen evolution and hydrogen bubbles start bubbling up out of, out of the pit. So we have the H2 form. Next, we're going to examine our sample underneath a digital optical microscope. As we increase the magnification on this sample of polished and etched aluminum, we can begin to see the defects where corrosion initiates. There are the black voids and then the gray dendrites and the dark second phase particles. We're going to put our corroded aluminum sample into an electron microscope and get a higher magnification images of the corroded surface. In the electron microscope, the white corrosion product on the surface of the corroded aluminum now develops certain features. We can see that now there are mounds uh, and tubes and chimneys poking off at the surface. And these are the chimneys we described earlier where the hydrogen um, bubbles pump the uh, aluminum out and they react with the water to form aluminum hydroxide. This uh, mound here looks like a perfect smokestack. It's just a straight chimney. And off to the side of it, we can see the little cubic salt crystals. 
Now, if we clean the sample with nitric acid, we can remove these, uh, this white corrosion product. And there we see the pits beneath, beneath each of the um, uh, chimneys. And inside the pits, we can actually see the second phase particles, which are lit up here in this image. Corrosion is a concern for our commercial aircraft and our military aircraft. We have to understand corrosion so that we can prevent it. How do you prevent aluminum from corroding? Um, the first number one thing is alloy choice. Is that some alloys are more corrosion resistant and other alloys uh, tend to corrode a lot faster and tend to cor stress corrosion crack or fatigue, uh, pitting. Next number important thing is design. You want to design for the alloy for the assembly to be dry. You want drainage, you want rounded corners, polishing if possible, and no crevices, get rid of all the crevices. Third thing is that if you can use barrier coatings, you want to go for barrier coatings. Uh, barrier coatings, for example, conversion coatings, uh, anodizing, primers, uh, or polymer coatings, or organic coatings, those all provide good protection. And the fourth thing is no salt, no chlorides. If you can avoid salt and chlorides, um, that's a very important way of preventing corrosion. So there's a lot more. This is only an introduction, but thank you very much for listening.